Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get together live here on Facebook every day of the week at 1030 in the morning, where we take a look at news, comments, headlines, questions, ideas, suggestions, and tips to have an awesome live here in Puerto Vallarta as English speaking locals. And before anything else happens, I have to acknowledge this amazing last name that I couldn't even begin to Blah. But, oh my God, Jonathan, I would love to hear the sound of your last name one day. What a great last name. That's just a lot of syllables. It is great to get together with every one of you every single day. And, of course, you know, we do uh, news and comments and so forth and so on. And if this is the first time that you're here, very simple. Let us know by writing the word new on your in your comments. And we'll be so very glad to give you a proper welcome. Also, if you have any questions or important comments that you want everybody to see, well, everybody sees everything, but the ones that we try to acknowledge during the broadcasts are the ones that have a cue at the beginning of the broadcast. And of course, today we got lucky. We have everything. We have good news. We have bad news. We have shady news. There are shady news. And we have interesting reports on artists like Sergio Bustamante. Somebody wanted to learn more about Sergio Bustamante and his pillow head people. And uh, of course, it's Walking Wednesday. So we have not one, but two awesome Walking Wednesday walks. One is uh, the expected prepared walk, but the, the second one is an impromptu walkette that I put together yesterday because it has to do with a very relevant topic today. So let's take a quick look at who is hanging out. Um, well, Margaret is hanging out at New Westminster. Good for you. Um, Portland is in the house. Hello, Michael. It's great to see you. Um, oh, El Centro is visiting friends at Christmas bar. Love it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Super excited to see where we're walking today. We're walking up. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, so that means we're going up the hill. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hello, Christy. It's great to see you. Um, no cues so far, so everything is good. Uh, boom, ba -dim, bam, 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 bam. Let's see. Yes, it is another beautiful day in paradise. Thank you very much for that, Larry. Uh, oh, Larry, aren't you one of the owners of the candy place? There's shade about you guys. There is shade about you guys. Um, and it's not my shade. It's the shade that was published by the paper. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just sharing the news. Um, okay, so I think we're all pretty much here. Uh, it, <clears throat> again, I showcase or highlight or mention some of you, but uh, if you don't get mentioned, it's not because I don't love you. It's just that, you know, we have a lot of things to talk about today, so we might as well get started with the important stuff. Well, the good news is that there is now a website where you, if you are a senior, in Mexico, over 60, if you are a senior, you can now 
register yourself to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And this is good news. The bad news is that so many people have tried that the system is breaking down, but uh, the government has assured that they're working on restoring the website, excuse me, where you can register yourself to get the vaccine. Um, apparently, they were receiving 70,000 attempts per second. That seems like a lot of attempts, but the bottom line is the federal government has launched this website, mivacuna.salud.gov.mx, and you'll get that in the show notes as always, where you can, um, uh, you can sign up to get your vaccine, and the process is identified here, which is really helpful. You access the website, you register your CURP, and we'll get into the CURP in a second, um, and a telephone number, and then you will know that um, somebody's going to call you eventually um, <clears throat> to, uh, to, so that you can go and get your vaccine. Now, you're probably wondering, what is this business of the CURP? Well, Okay, here's the website. The website is not working. Let me try to refresh it. And indeed, you know, the little um, IT minions at the federal government must be trying to figure out how to restore the website so that people can go and get vaccinated. Um, along the lines of vaccines, we learned that Mexico has authorized the use of the, um, the Sputnik V vaccine, which is a good thing. And that we also learned that The Lancet, which is a very prestigious medical publication, I believe it's out of uh, the UK, has written a favorable article about the Russian vaccine, Sputnik V. And they claim that the vaccine has an, effic an efficiency uh, of 91.6%. Uh, so if we end up getting that vaccine or any other vaccine, I will just be happy to get a vaccine. But back to this CURP business, you know, the Clave Única de Registro del Poblacion. Um, oh, Angelica, I'm going to throw some shade at you, <laughs> but not yet. Uh, let me finish my, my CURP-related news and then we'll look at your comments. Um Clave Única de Registro de Población, or CURP, C-U-R-P, CURP, CURP, is um, the number that the government uses to register individually all the people that live in Mexico, national and foreigners as well. So, and along with all the Mexican citizens that live in other countries. There are instructions in the government websites on how you can obtain your CURP through the internet, and um, I think, um, well, I don't, I think the, okay, what you need is to fill out your personal information, your full name, date of birth, uh, where you were born, and your gender, uh, and uh, somehow you end up getting an individual number that you can use so that you can use that number to, um, to pre-register for your COVID vaccine. Let me take a quick look at your comments so far because I'm sure that was just a fair amount of information to handle. Uh, and uh, let's see, let's see, do I see any cues? Oh, Jorge, Jorge boldly takes an attempt at, uh, at the last name, I, you know, I chose not to, Jorjito, just because, you know, I don't want to uh, be disrespectful. Uh, but what a beautiful last name. That's a lot of syllables. Um, Larry puts on his, his sunnies for the shade about candy bar. Uh, no worries. Again, I will just report what I see and I may throw in some personal comments. Uh, again, as I said before, I'm not taking sides, but I'm watching the church go at the gay community in my town. And it's kind of, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Angelica, mini shade for you. I heard that only Mexican citizens first. I hope you heard that from a credible news source. What I did see in additional commentary that Hugo lopez Gatel made about this whole process of getting in line to get your vaccine is that the order in which people are signing up for it, like, for example, if you sign up for it today, if you're able to somehow get into the system um, and then your best friend signs up for it a week later, it does not mean that you're going to get the vaccine before your friend. So I would imagine it's a thing that... Uh, <laughs> 
I to think that I'm sorry, I'm sneaking at another comment and I'll get to that in a second. Um, it's not the, the, the order is not predetermined. So bottom line, um, again, Angelica, I wonder where you heard this business that only me that Mexican citizens would receive the vaccine first. I'd be curious to know. Um, and um, and that's pretty much what it is. Alex says, when are we selling the T-shirts that say Gene, but boom, boom, boom. Um, <laughs> You guys are too funny. You guys are too funny. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, thank you for that remark, Logan. I'm sure that that'll be comforting for some people. Uh, uh, let's see what else. Uh, um, okay. Okay, here we are. Okay, yes, I'm caught up with you. So let me continue with the news uh, and uh, what we have here. What do we have? We have, of course, commentary from the Hotel Association from the state of Jalisco. Uh, they don't anticipate that tourism is going to come back to Puerto Vallarta until all, we have all received our vaccine. This makes perfect sense, but they go as far as to saying, well, Mexico should advance along the same path as the United States so that we can receive our tourists back. I think there are two sides to that coin. One of the sides has to do with the fact that we have eternally relied on American and Canadian tourism to make our living. And of course, if the idea is to do this alongside with what's going on in the United States, well, it's not like the United States is having a glorious time distributing their vaccines. Um, so it is a complicated thing. I just wanted to very quickly share it with you. Um, <clears throat> and now um, a little bit of shade. This is this is interesting shade. Apparently, according to Vallarta Independiente, uh, the municipality of Puerto Vallarta received um, two million pesos to restore uh, Los Muertos Pier eight months ago. And what have they done? They have done absolutely nothing. Um, uh, despite the fact that apparently this money was allocated for, uh, for this matter. Uh, this article does not say much of anything else other than just pointing out the fact that somewhere, somewhere, the municipality of Puerto Vallarta is supposed to have two million pesos to fix the, the, the pier, and this hasn't happened. Does the municipality still have the money or not? Who knows? But I'm so very happy to see that this is being brought up by the news because this has everything to do with being accountable. And uh, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Let us continue with the weather and we continue with shady stuff after the break. So you see, we're flying through the news today because there's a lot of information to share, as I told you at the beginning. Uh, snarky weatherman says Jeff Bezos is stepping down as CEO of Amazon so he can spend more time swimming in his pool filled with gold coins. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Today's weather is 25 degrees Celsius, feels like 27 tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow. Today is also 77 degrees Fahrenheit, so whether you're a Fahrenheit or a Celsius kind of person, you've got some weather coming your way. Uh, humidity is at 61%, and today we can expect a clear th day, clear through the day with high temperature of 29, low temperature of 17. Uh, Thursday, uh, clear throughout the day, uh, high temperature of 30, low temperature of 17. And Friday, clear throughout the day as well, by high temperature of 29, low temperature of 16, perfect weather, perfect weather to walk your dog out and about, unless your own dog is feeling a little paranoid about contracting coronavirus. Is it possible that our dogs might be getting a little edgy? Where are you going? You guys want to go to the park? No, dogs no distance. Like last time. Don't come close. Stay back. Uh, back. Six feet from me. Six feet. To the trauma. I got one of these. Where's mine? And that, my friends, is what why is the reason why I have a cat and not a dog. 
I would not want my dog to have anxiety for going out and hanging out with other dogs and being socially not distant. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do we do Bustamante? Or, no, let's do, let's do more, more interesting, shady information. Um, and uh, yes, let's, gotta, let's talk about candy bar. Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so now, now um, the local paper claims that candy bar is mocking the people across the street that are demonstrating against Candy Bar. And apparently Candy Bar is publishing social media items such as this one that says, come and take a look at what everybody's talking about. We are having a, a protest two for one special. Come eat something fun and enjoy this, that, and the other. So that's what it is. Uh, again, you know, I don't have, I don't take sides here. I don't take sides. I think the church has their points. I think the bar has its points. My only wish for you guys is that you find a way to fix this uh, honestly and truthfully. And what I mean by that is, and you know this, I know what I've heard. I haven't been, uh, so I can't comment on Candy Bar, but I will say this much. If you are genuinely authentically without any doubt a restaurant bar then my thoughts are for you and i hope you do great you have a lot of things to do in this city um where there are so many restaurants and it's difficult to to stand out in a city that is a major culinary destination so if you are a restaurant bar as your license says you are um then my best wishes for you to continue to prosper, to continue to promote your food and, and your cocktails, but your food because you're a restaurant. Now, if on the other hand, you are not a restaurant bar and you're just serving food as an excuse for people to, serve, to enjoy drinks, so you are a bar disguised as a restaurant because you have it on paper, then you are no better or no worse than all the other bars that are doing the same thing. Uh, so there you have it. That's my two cents on this fabulous situation. A little bit more shade. Remember the, um, the letters, the letters. Well, apparently the letters are mirrored in the front and you can barely notice that on the photograph. I don't know if I can zoom in on the photo. Well, it doesn't zoom much, but apparently the sides of the letters are designed. Oh, there you go. Well, you cannot really see it, but apparently the, the sides of the letters are designed with um, Manuel Lepe type of ornaments. And we know Manuel Lepe to be this fabulous artist that, um, that um, lived here in Puerto Vallarta and created iconic whimsical illustrations of the bay with whimsical little people and so forth and so on. We've seen some of his work in uh, recently in the bridge that crosses into Emiliano Zapata. Um, and uh, this is res the response, person responsible for doing this is, is his daughter, Marcela Lepe, because she continues to paint in the style made famous by her father. Well, now apparently Marcela Lepe is attempting to charge the city 300,000 pesos to paint Manuel Lepe like decorations on the side of the letter. So she got a lot of shade from people that saying, well, charging 300 pesos for the right to your father's work is a fair amount of money. And Marcela Lepe came online and said in a video, well, no, I am not pretending to charge that outrageous amount of money for the rights to use my father's work. The money is for the paint and the painting and to hire people to uh, to paint. So I don't get that, you know? It's like if I had to paint, I mean, if I look at the walls in my apartment, the, the area covered by the walls is much smaller than the area covered by those letters. So would I have to pay 300,000 pesos if I wanted to hire people to come and paint my apartment, even with artsy stuff, I don't get that. I really, I really don't get that. 
so, so there you have it. Um, that's a shady bit, bit of news. We hear back from Larry, uh, one of the owners of Candy Bar, that says, Thank you, Paco. Yes, we are an amazing restaurant with a full menu and would love for you and everyone to come to enjoy. Thank you. Uh, and again, you know, no shade at you from yours truly. But, you know, you guys are fucking around with a church. And I'm not saying that the church is right or wrong, but they are there. You know what I mean? They are there. Now, uh, moving right along before we go into the whole business of the walks for today. A few days ago, somebody asked or some people expressed interest in learning more about the work of Sergio Bustamante, the, uh, the man responsible for this particular uh, pillow people sculpture on the Malecon. And I had fun finding some information about Bustamante, but um, uh, I, actually, the research that I did took an unexpected turn as I learned more and more about him and went down the rabbit hole. Uh, we do know that Sergio Bustamante was born in Culiacán in 1949, but his relationship with our state continued along um, from an early age because, you know, he, he was raised in the state of Jalisco. He studied architecture in the University of Guadalajara, but pre pretty much realized that art was not his thing. He started doing, uh, creating arts, making um, um, suns and moons and sirens and seashells and, and all kinds of fast, fantastical uh, beings. And it was at the end of the 60s that he opened his first store in Tonalá, uh, in, in Guadalajara, and he had his first exposition, uh, art exposition, in the prestigious Galeria Mizraki in Mexico City. Um, in his own words, he says, I started painting, I made some lions, and I took them to Alberto Mizraki, who had the best gallery in Mexico City. He was present, he was at that time selling works by Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. I was 23 years old. He bought art from me. He called me Maestro. And for each painting that I delivered, he paid 5,000 pesos, which at the time was a fortune. I was painting one a week. And, um, and all of a sudden, I had a lot of money. So I could buy a house for myself. And I went to Europe. He went and lived in Amsterdam for a couple of years during the beginning of the 70s. Um, and that broadened his view of art, of course. In 1975, he opened his first atelier in Tlaquepaque, where he started working with ceramics, carpentry, and jewelry, along with other artists. And to date, that uh, workshop continues to be in operation. In um, 1987, he published his book, El México de Sergio Bustamante, Mexi uh, The Mexico of Sergio Bustamante, with texts written by the renowned Mexican author Juan Jose Arreola. Uh, there must be some controversy around him because um, in one of the interviews that I found, uh, I read that um, he says, I don't care if they call me uh, uh, artist, artist or artisan. Uh, what is important to me is to, to convey my work and to freely express myself. Um, so it was it was interesting to read all this stuff, but the part that really blew my mind because it opened a door for me is um, uh, had less to do with Sergio Bustamante and more to do with his grandfather. You see, he became an orphan at a, as a child. As a child, both his parents died. So one of his grandparents, uh, his his grandfather, took care of him and raised him, and it was his grandfather. Excuse me. Thank you. It was his grandfather who raised him and inspired him to become an artist. But the interesting thing about this narrative is that his grandfather was Chinese. And he was Chinese at a time in Mexico's history that I was not even aware of until yesterday when I was reading about this, in which the Chinese community was severely prosecuted and deported in Mexico. This happened after the end of the Mexican Revolution. So uh, Bustamante's grandfather was forced to take uh, to change his last name to to avoid being uh, being removed, uh, deported 
from Mexico. But then I started reading more about what's, what's this deal with the deportation, uh, deportation of Chinese people in Mexico. And there are some sordid chapters of Mexican history that I discovered yesterday, including the murder, the unjustified murder of over 300 Chinese residents living in Mexico uh, who were killed just for the sake of being Chinese. This happened in the early part of the 20th century. And to date, this situation has not been fully clarified by the government. So I thought that was fascinating to learn more about. And um, and there you have it, a little bit of, of, of information about Bustamante. And I hope you guys enjoy that. Now, let me take a quick look at some of your latest comments before I give you a walk and another walk, uh, because I have two walks today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Paul, that was priceless. CURP stands for Completely Uninformed Residentes Permanentes. That is, the, the, that is the funniest, funniest thing that is so wonderful. Where is, okay, you deserve this. I bow in your general direction. Do you have a CURP? Do you have a completely uninformed permanent resident? I love it. I love it. That is so funny. Uh, let's see what else we... <laughs> oh, mi vida. That was beautiful. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, so we've we've seen each other. Oh, Jonathan, I must. Please, please. I mean, I'm just fascinated with words and language. And, and I would love to learn more about uh, your last name. This is interesting. Uh... James says Candy Bar is trying to make the best of the situation, but those kind of things never turned out well. Well, again, you know, if you are, ugh, no, I'm. Let's just okay. You know, Candy Candy Bar. You know, um, for starters, if you're a restaurant, you know, people should learn to get to know you as Candy Candy Restaurant or whatever your name is, because uh, being a bar in 2021 in Jalisco, in Puerto Vallarta, is a very, very risky business. Uh, let's see what else we have. But you're getting shitloads of publicity, that's for sure. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it's time to walk. Yay. Okay, so I can honestly make a, a confession I have gotten to this point in which it's difficult to hear uh, commentary about not being able to shop at the big supermarkets. <sighs> there, I said it. I have had enough. Um, I know everybody's situation is personal and unique and it's the most important situation in the world, but in a city of 350,000 with thousands of beautiful little stores when you can find just about everything you need, okay, you will not find those fabulous Tefal pants that you have to buy this week and you will not find those 2,000 cotton thread count sheets that you can only buy at Costco, but maybe you can wait a couple of weeks for that. Now, in recent in recent broadcasts, a couple of my Versailles pals and Fluvial pals have mentioned a store that is called California and have been intrigued about it because this is a great store where you can buy great things and there's like really fun music going on. And I know the store, but I figured why not show you what California looks like? And it was a complete happenstance that yesterday I found myself running errands. I have to go pay my taxes. So I was walking past um, past California and I had my camera with me. So guess what? Let's take a look inside of the California store. Buenas tardes.
Okay, so I've asked for permission to come in here and film. And of course, there's a wholesale section that doesn't look so clean, but look at all this fresh produce that you can find over here. This is at Fruterias California. And we are gonna take a look at some of the things that we can find. Oops. And look at this, just fruits. Oh God, there I am. Just all kinds of fresh produce that you can find here. All kinds of peppers. If you're looking for peppers, this is the place to go. Ginger, more peppers. There's a small section back here where you can find cheeses, even some natural cheeses and sour cream. There is a refrigerated section over here where you can find more chingaderas. And some supermarket things. Here's the salsa department, all kinds of things that you can buy. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. And more stuff, more stuff, and more stuff. The candy section. Do you want some candy? You can buy it here. And then we have the dry section, dried peppers of all kinds in case you want to do some cooking, flour, grains, and then some canned products over here. And it's really funny because the guy says to me at the door, yes, you can film, but don't point at the floor. So yes, this is a store that is probably not gonna be as pristine looking as Walmart or La Comer or Mega or whatever. But for anybody that has been complaining about not being able to shop, look, you can even get your own shopping bags here. These are the traditional Mexican kind and so forth and so on. So next time you decide to go into a panic because you cannot shop at the big stores, just know that in Colonia Versalles or surrounding areas, you have this wonderful store, California, where you can buy all kinds of wonderful fresh produce and some supermarket goods. There you have it. And now we're on to celebrate the rest of the day. Ciao. And that was California. And you're probably going to wonder, where is that? Well, it's on Francisco Villa, literally behind La Comer. Um, so um, unless you have to have that brand new stainless steel chingadera that you saw two weeks ago at Costco, or that very exotic spice that you can only find at La Comer, you know, you can you can go to beautiful stores such as this one and buy all kinds of wonderful things and actually shopping the way Mexico shops. There you go. Uh, so that was my constructive way to contribute to that discussion. And uh, seriously, check it out. It's a great store. It's a great store. Now, our walk, our walk. It is Wednesday and Wednesday is for walking. Um, and, uh, oh, thank you very much for that, James. Yes, they do have a location in the Emiliano Zapata market, but it is a smaller location. They also have their, their original store is in Pitillal, uh, and it, the store in Pitillal is, is quite large as well. But this one is very conveniently located at, uh, uh, at uh, Francisco Villa Avenue, right on, on right where you, um, well, I forget the name of the streets, but I'm going to show you the, the bookmark and you'll be able to find it, but it's one block away from Lick's Ice Cream, so you can feel good about yourself because you shop Mexican style, and then you can go have amazing ice cream to celebrate. There you have it. Okay, so we're walking, and where are we walking? Well, let's find out together. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Ta-da! 
Hello. Today we are standing on the Malecon and we are headed into an interesting place that you may or may not know about. Uh, we are going to pay a visit to Puerto Vallarta's old lighthouse. And we are going to do that by walking up Galeana Street, which is where you can find this itty bitty little historical lighthouse, which at some point was actually in use, but that's not the lighthouse that I refer to. We are going to climb a couple of blocks up the hill and you are going to get to see the original lighthouse that was in operation during the time in which Puerto Vallarta was not so much a tourist destination, but an industrial and commercial maritime port. All historical photographs show larger vessels, ships, as it were, docking here in Puerto Vallarta and loading and unloading all kinds of goods. Needless to say, Puerto Vallarta stopped being a commercial port many years ago and the old lighthouse which we're going to visit today stopped being used as such and in recent years it was restored to become a tourist destination. Now, it may or may not be open today because of the current pandemic restrictions. We are going to have to wait and see once we get there. But the good thing is that we're going to explore yet another one of these beautiful streets in Gringo Gulch that have all these steps and stairs. But we won't do that before first paying tribute to this beautiful sculpture here. I don't remember the name, but I do believe this is a sculpture created by Ramis Barquet. It is one of the famous sculptures near the Malecon. And let's just climb up the steps. Now, when I say climb up the steps, you don't need to be worried. This is nowhere near as challenging as when we went all the way up to the La Cruz lookout. This is a lot easier to manage. Yes, and that's me sniffling, by the way. <laughs> And no, I'm not drinking wine. I'm drinking water. <laughs> Why is it a lot easier to manage? Well, for starters, we're not in a hurry. <laughs> and secondly, we are only going up for one block. So as you can see, We are almost to the end of our climb, and looking back, this is what it looks like. Isn't it beautiful? And the great thing about Gringo Gulch, this neighborhood, is that all the different steps on all the different streets are landscaped differently. And for the most part, are beautifully maintained. So here we are. Matamoros Street, and the old lighthouse is just half a block away. We're going to walk there so that you can see it for yourself. And, ta-da, <laughs> there it is. So let's take a look at what's going on up there. 
and continue with our adventure. For starters, it's not close to the public, which is good. And the public seems to be busy here, doing all kinds of public things, which is fine. Buenas tardes. They were getting high. We don't really care. If I was done with work, I would be sitting around somewhere getting high too. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. This is the view of the bay from the old lighthouse. Now I'm going to have to look on my notes to see when it was built, when it was in operation, when it stopped being used etc etc but for the time being I wanted you to see a little bit of this gorgeous view which is only two blocks away from the Malecon looking south you can see the eyesore of Molino de Agua some of us remember when that building was not there in fact Molino de Agua was the first obnoxiously eyesore building Disgusting. That would eventually change the landscape of Colonia Emiliano Zapata. For worse. Then before us, of course, is the whole El Centro neighborhood. And then we can see the hotel zone over here. And of course, the tall towers are also part of the hotel zone. And, of course, the rest of the bay. Today is a very beautiful and clear day. And from this vantage point, you can sort of appreciate the magicalness or the magical quality of finding a home in El Centro. A lot of these locations have been built almost on top of another. And, of course, nowadays there's a huge combination of traditional original buildings and many others that are not so new. Uh, wait, let me say that again. <laughs> There's a combination of old traditional buildings and others that are completely new. Um, and the big advantage of this neighborhood is that, you know, for the most part, you have many beautiful views of the bay. Some people might find that being so close to the church might be problematic because of the church bells. And also, the fact that you're living up on the hill does not necessarily mean that there's going to be a street where a taxi can drive you all the way to your doorstep. But for those of us that don't live in this neighborhood, it is always a pleasure to just walk up the stairs for one block and another block without stairs and find ourselves in this beautiful vantage point. So, this is our work for the day. I hope one of these days you find yourselves downtown Puerto Vallarta and you come check it out as well. Have a good one. And that was our walk for the day. And I love walking up there for a couple of reasons. First of all, Number one, it's easier than it sounds. You know, I was huffing and puffing, but you know, guys, I'm 58, I'm out of shape, so I'm about to huff and puff. But it's only two blocks away from the Malecon. And number two, I am always amused um, to learn of how many people have been in town for the longest time and never even knew those steps existed. In fact, I was standing there to meet with two friends because we were going to a little dinner gathering with other friends and my friends who are frequent watchers of this broadcast had never been up there before and they've lived in Puerto Vallarta for over a decade. So I hope that uh, sharing this particular walk with you will inspire you 
to go up there because it's it's easy. Yes, I am talking about you, Joey. <laughs> I laughed so hard when you guys arrived and we're like, we've never been this before, seen this before. And I mean, you guys are all about town guys. So I, I thought that was absolutely funny. Let me take a quick look at, um, at your comments before we go on with our day. Uh, oh, we have more headlines. Do I really want to give you more headlines? Uh, oh, we'll wait for tomorrow for these because, yeah, yeah, we'll see. These are evergreen headlines. They are just as good tomorrow as they are today. So the, the last three headlines I had for you, I'm going to save for tomorrow. Let me take a quick look at some of your comments. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Is that wine set Joe halfway through the broadcast? No, this I was drinking water because I get thirsty about all this talking after all this talking uh let's see let's see da da di da di da da dun go dun go dun dun mm, 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 mm. our uber driver dropped us off there when we were trying to get to mirador de la cruz um <laughs> well i certainly hope that you were able to see this this particular place uh Let's see what else is going on. Good to hear, Chris. Again, it's a very easy climb. It's a very easy climb. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Barbara says she's, she's, she's going there today. Excellent. That sounds beautiful. Today's a perfect day to be up there, by the way. Um, and I think we are... Done. Thank you very much for that, Jorjito. I love your rainbow love. Um, and I think we are pretty much uh, done. Oh, the cookie lady. Araceli, como estas? I haven't seen you in forever, but I have your cookies in my refrigerator. Uh, uh, and I think we are pretty much done with today's broadcast. Uh, as always, it is such a pleasure to get together with you. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you were inspired to do something I hope you uh, learned something new today. I hope you laughed at least a little bit. Uh, did we do the dogs? Yes, we did the dogs. So I think I did everything that I wanted to do today. Go out and get some fresh air. Remember, we are living in this quarantine period or this restriction period, but you know we need to stay healthy. Um, I personally find that walking out in places where I don't run into a lot of people with my face mask is a great way to stay focused and stay kind and nurture my body and my soul. I encourage you to find a way to do this safely for yourselves and, um, and stay, stay kind, stay healthy, stay in touch, stay friendly, explore those little shops. Some people were asking, do we have stores like that, like California and Emiliano Zapata? Well, sometimes part of the adventure is hopping on an Uber to another part of town that you have never seen before. Uh, and uh, that is bound to broaden your appreciation of what our city is. So <clears throat> explore. Go out there, but be careful. And uh, hopefully we get together sometime in the near future, maybe even tomorrow. Have a great day.